Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your GIS News for Thursday, October 19. The Cannabis Licensing Authority, CLA, has issued its first two licenses for legal operation in the cannabis industry. These licenses were issued on Wednesday in a ceremony at the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries. They include a Tier 1 cultivator license granted to Epicon and a Tier 1 processor license issued to Everything Oily. The two entities signed a tripartite agreement signifying their arrangement to conduct business together in keeping with the requirement to have the industry operate as a closed-loop system. During the process, we have endeavoured to remain in dialogue with our applicants every step of the way and we are confident that they have satisfied the rigours of the regulations. The CLA has granted another three licences which will be issued once the applicants complete the requirements to facilitate this. Another 57 applications are at the conditional approval stage, while an overall 209 are being processed. Industry Minister Carl Samuda addressed the issue of accelerating the process for granting licenses. For those who are impatient, let me again remind them that we are a country of laws and we must stick to the laws of our land and we will never compromise that which is necessary the Senate is expected to shortly vote on the legislation clearing the criminal records of four national heroes after it was passed in the House of Representatives on Tuesday. The legislation is the National Heroes and Other Freedom Fighters Absolution from Criminal Liability in Respect of Specified Events Act 2017. It will absolve national heroes George William Gordon, Paul Bogle, Sam Sharp and Marcus Garvey of criminal liability arising from their participation in acts of liberation with moral justification. The same applies to their supporters, sympathizers and participants by association and other freedom fighters. The legislation was supported by both sides of the House and was passed without dissent. Mr. Speaker, it is done. We, the children of our ancestors, have by this act expressed complicity with them in their heroic stance against oppression and enslavement. We stand by our heroes and uns unsung heroes as we absolve them of all criminal liability, pledging never to forget their historic and selfless thrust for justice, their unwavering belief in their personal dignity and integrity, and their self-effacing sacrifice for their grandchildren and their children, children. In related news, the Jamaican leg of the CARICOM Reparations Youth Baton Relays and Rallies was launched in St. Thomas on Wednesday. The relays will be staged island-wide over the period October 19 to December 27. During the three-month activity, the atrocities of slavery and the economic and social impact on Caribbean countries will be highlighted. Speaking ahead of the launch, Culture Minister Olivia Grange stressed that the event encourages participation from young people and the general public for the success of the region-wide movement. Our young people will be running for reparations, expressing thereby solidarity with our ancestors and expressing their commitment to the removal of the stigmas of negativity and criminality attached to the names and characters of our forebears. Each leg of the CARICOM Reparations Youth Baton Relays and Rallies will be run by a group of young people, with one of them carrying the baton and transferring it at the end of their leg to another group. Relays have been held in Barbados, Guyana, Suriname, St. Lucia, and Antigua and Barbuda. The exchange of the baton from Antigua to Jamaica took place on Tuesday, October 10. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett has announced that the popular heritage site, Devon House, will come off the government's budget by 2020. He says this is testament to the strong and focused initiatives at building up the property's offerings and effectively its profitability. He pointed to his ministry's targeted interventions to establish Devon House as Kingston's premier gastronomy centre. As part of that, support was granted to expand the ice cream parlour on the property's north lawns. Other new culinary offerings include a popular Greek confusion restaurant called Opa. And while addressing this weekend's official opening of the Steakhouse on the Veranda restaurant at Devon House, Minister Bartlett said a special kitchen will be built and marketed to visitors across the world to come to Devon House to cook. The Tourism Ministry also has plans to establish food stations, a concept which will allow tourists and visitors a unique opportunity to sample a variety of authentic Jamaican cuisine in a convenient way. And finally, 
Residents of Denham Town are welcoming the presence of the security forces in their community, which was declared the second zone of special operations by Prime Minister Andrew Holness on Tuesday. During a visit by JIS News on Wednesday, a number of residents expressed that they hoped the operations would restore peace and unity in the community. Police and soldiers are ever in the area, so that, that, that not going to change nothing. You see, unless them change all the people they live. You see, better house and better thing, Virgin, and that's where them said job and certain things, you see, do The few officers that I have associated myself with, they are very nice, they talk to us nice. The only thing I want to want is to see like they would have helped us to fix the street lights, that there is no lights, and they would just help us to fix the street lights and just help us to do certain things, that like running water that is keep on running and won't stop that will be help with us. I don't find no fault with it because I'm not a lawless individual and my friends and who I know, which is this one here. And others are wrong, they are not we are not lawless. So okay. therefore we appreciate them just to keep the thing. Because Mark you know, whether my grandson, my son, and we won't call it etc. etc. me busting gun. If you want compromise that are you. But I appreciate you in my house because I'm a law abiding citizen. I can't take too much of the gunshot. Innocent people are dead. Sometimes when the man are up here, so them not go on and everything for those unite and come together and live and work. You understand in the community, just peace, want and love. Peace and love, love one another. And so, Una, Una Bright, them send them back to school, go learn something. Who send them a DJ, them go learn DJ. Who send them one to learn for this, them learn for this. During the JIS's visit, small groups of people could be seen on the streets and several community shops were open, although most residents opted to stay indoors. Residents leaving and entering the community were searched at the approximately 30 checkpoints that have been established. In announcing Denham Town as a second zone of special operations, the Prime Minister said the community met the first order criteria of ongoing gang warfare, rampant criminality, escalating violence and murder, and a threat to rule of law. The security operation is expected to last for 60 days in the first instance. Lieutenant Colonel Murphy Price of the Jamaica Defence Force and Senior Superintendent of Police Everald Linton are jointly in charge of operations. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching.